Colonia San Rafael is just west of the historic city center. It was established in the late 19th century as one of the first formal neighborhoods outside of the city center and initially catered to the wealthy of the Porfirio Diaz era. The Colonia has been in a decline with the abandonment of mansions as wealthier residents left. However, more recently, the Colonia has been in an upswing in development as young artists and galleries have moved into the area. Many artists have found Colonia San Rafael less expensive, accessible, and more dynamic than trendy Colonia Condesa and Colonia Roma. Hey guys, we're in our neighborhood, our new neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> we miss our old one. Definitely miss Coyacan. Um, this is San Rafael. And we're just kind of learning the, learning the neighborhood, learning stuff to do here, what's cool. We have definitely seen tons of cafes. And what else? I don't know. Lots of cafes. like really old buildings. <laughs> yeah. There's actually lots of theaters. This used to be yeah, lots uh, of theaters. the Broadway of Mexico. So there's lots yeah. of theaters. We haven't seen any that are open yet, but hopefully if we do, we can like get some tickets and go see that would be uh, super a cool. show. That would be really awesome. Yeah, that would be super cool. There's so many cafes, but I managed to pick one. We're left going here? left here. It's a 15 minute walk from our Airbnb and we're gonna get some coffee, get some food. Alabrije Cafe was amazing. Those two sandwiches, of course I had a bite of Brittany's, was amazing guys, really cool vibe. It's very laid back, just like most of Mexico. It's got like a cool bike theme, cool like eco theme, and I would 100% recommend going here if you're looking for a good coffee or a cold brew or a frappe and a really good sandwich. Teatro Opera. This opera cinema was inaugurated on March 11, 1949. From 1971 to 93, it was not very active until 1993, it was taken over as a concert hall. We've been walking around the neighborhood for a little bit and we're uh, starting to really love it. But, uh, Brittany just said how every neighborhood has something unique and something mm -hmm. different about it, no matter where you go. It's really cool. It's like yeah. each, each area in the city of Mexico has its own personality and it's like its own little town with its own community. And mm. honestly, we were just being sad and yeah. Coyacan and we still love Coyacan so much. It's uh, very unique and I think it's a little slice of heaven and I think if anything we just really connected to that area. Yeah. And you know I think we just saw ourselves living there and yeah, just definitely. fell in love with it. So but you know what? We're we're learning new places and walking around now and you know the best is going and finding somewhere to be and sit yeah. there and that is now that we've done fun. that, it's like kind of started to make us feel more comfortable here and we just gotta get used to the area. <laughs> We're now walking to Angel de la Independencia, which is Mexico City's, one of Mexico City's biggest landmarks. You said it right, Davey, good job. Oh, yeah, it did. And it's in a roundabout stands for uh, one of the, the heroes in the War of Independence. So you've probably seen it before. It's beautiful. We have seen it before with our eyes. Guys, look, look. There's like people. Oh, yeah. I couldn't see it in Santa That's awesome. 
like blanked out. That's awesome. Monumento a la Madre, or the Mother's Monument, is a monument commemorating Mexican mothers, installed in Mexico City, inaugurated on May 10th, 1949. El Angel was built in 1910 during the presidency of Porfirio Diaz by architect Antonio Rivera's Mercado to commemorate the centennial of the beginning of Mexico's War of Independence. In later years, it made it into a mausoleum for the most important heroes of that war. It is one of the most recognizable landmarks in Mexico City and has become a focal point for both celebration and protest. It resembles the July Column in Paris, the Berlin Victory Column in Berlin, and Columbus Monument in New York City. The Huntress Diana Fountain, Fuente de la Diana Cazadora, is a monumental fountain of Diana located in the roundabout at Paseo de la Reforma and Rio Mississippi and Sevilla Streets. We decided to try a restaurant that is just around the corner, I don't even think a minute walk, and in Spanish it translates to Ant's Kitchen, so you get a family vibe here. You feel like you're getting a meal cooked by your aunt, and it's really affordable, it's authentic Mexican, so we thought we'd come here and try it out, and so far we got some sopas, which is soup, for the starter, and we're about to order some mains, we're really excited to try it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Latias was amazing, such good food, authentic, just like, just such good food. It does feel like your aunt's cooking for you or you're, you're with your family. The atmosphere was awesome. San Rafael in a whole, we lived there for a month and we really started to love it. I think it's underrated and I think it could soon become almost like a Roma or a Condesa. Uh, it's really cool and I think some more hipster kind of creative people need to go in there and artists and yeah I think I think it's gonna be something to look into honestly in the future I think it's gonna be a really cool neighborhood it already is a cool neighborhood but I just mean Roma and Cadessa are like the hipster like you know if you're going to Mexico City and you're 20 30 or you're an artist something like that you're gonna fall in love with those I think this is like the next one, honestly, very safe, we always felt safe there. Mexico in general, honestly, we feel very safe. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I'm in Puerto Escondido right now, finishing this video up, and I can't wait to show you guys this place, it is absolutely magical. I'm editing uh, Oaxaca City right now, so stay tuned guys, there is tons of content coming. See you guys in the next one. Peace out. Rome to find home.